Hello and welcome back. Today I will discuss the problem of experiencing a locked joint or trigger finger, which can be painful and also often you can't go on playing but need the other hand to fix the finger. The joint which locks is for cello players usually the second joint in fingers 2, 3 and 4 of the left hand. Most commonly it's 3, which means that this joint pushes through, it's bent here, and when you want to move the finger, it stays straight, and you can't unlock it unless you take the other hand. It can happen to all players who by nature tend to have this second joint straight when they apply pressure. And it doesn't happen to players who straighten naturally the first joint. Here, this one. And I've not experienced it myself or with any player who bent naturally this joint. The good thing is, usually trigger fingers don't stay forever. They go away best when on one hand we keep using this hand and finger, but avoid the locking. I will discuss first a quick fix to avoid the locking and later explain the posture which can create the problem and mention exercises to change the habits. Here to the quick fix. It happens usually with the same finger in certain positions. When it happens, mark the spot. Mark all the spots where it happens and identify the similarities. Which finger of course, but also in which position? Does it happen first position? Does it happen here? Or does it happen higher? And on which string? If you have played already in positions, change the finger ring. If the second finger locks, an extended three might avoid it. If the three locks, an extended two, and playing avoids the locking. Or just shift into another position and write different finger rings in. Even the fear and anxiety that the finger might lock can cause a tension that make it lock even more. Also, without having identified the spots, many develop a tension approaching playing at all, as if it would occur unexpected without an announcement anywhere. But it is not like that. So mark the spots where it locks. Use there another finger but continue to use the locking finger in places without a problem. And now I will look at the left hand posture. Certain recommended techniques are not healthy, or at least not healthy for every hand. In history, a lot of so-called technical guidelines have not to do with playing easier, better, healthier, or better in tune. They rather had to do with a good behavior code, or that children understand some guidelines instantly, independently, if they are useful at all. Like I was told that I've always to lift my arm. My teacher had said, don't just let hang your arm there as if you are lazy. I was also told that my arm has to be held parallel to the neck of the cello, so that the fingers can form a right angle to the fingerboard. In English they would call it the square position. I was also told that my left thumb is always to be bent. Well, it's all not necessary. Interestingly, in the 19th century and before, they didn't play like this. They allowed and preferred a slanting hand, which is coming back now. Around 1900, the ideal taste in architecture art and body position became the right angle, the ultimate best. Cubism sprung up, a sense of correctness, or over-correctness developed away from rational thinking. The right angle was always right, 90 degrees, not 85, oh no, exactly 90 degrees. The most disastrous was the swastika, a bit later. The famous German cellist Hugo Becker wrote a large book on cello technique and aesthetics prim and proper cello playing, right angles, pretty arches, and so on. 
and up to today a left hand called square position is pictured in the majority of cello methods, considered the most perfect, although it makes two and three virtually incapable of moving right or left. It's really difficult to play right intonation at all. And the one and four curve in, so you waste actually energy to spread a tiny bit and often you don't make it. The hand does not want to extend easily. A sliding hand allows everything easier. You can move your fingers, you can extend and everything. Considering that playing fluently has to do with healthy movements, being relaxed and efficient in order to play for hours without pain, these rules were nonsense and can cause pain and also our problem here. Trigger finger or lock joints. I look at the posture in which most trigger fingers happen. The trigger finger happens when a finger is under pressure, particularly when the hand knuckles are higher as a contact point on the string. Like if the hand stands high and I pull, apply pressure, then this knuckle might push in. A reason can be the cello is too close to our neck or to our shoulder and I show. When the cello rests on the shoulder, the left arm needs to go up to reach. And the same happens when the neck is very close to our neck. What I show now might look and feel strange, but has cured quite some trigger fingers. I hold the left arm straight down the neck of the cello. And I extend the fingers a bit. Now I crawl with the fingers past the A string and curve around around the neck to grab the A-string. I need to go that far that the fourth finger just grabs the A-string and lies flat on it. The first finger will also lie flat on the string. Three and four will get a little bent but are also not high up on the, high up on the string. The arm should still be close to the neck and the hand plate as well. The thumb should point straight up towards the neck. So the thumb is not like this. In this position there will be a straight line from the elbow to the second joint of the finger. So it goes straight up to virtually this joint. The second joint is the one which needs to learn bending. It's a triggering joint. So it's good that all is straight and it starts bending here. Here is an LP cover showing Grostopovich playing the first finger on A string. He pushes even the first knuckle through. I've never seen a trigger finger on the first knuckle. It can be pushed through. And again to Grostopovich, he often does vibrato on the third finger with the first knuckle pushed through. And I've seen him doing it. It doesn't harm and it sounds great. And he supposed to develop it because he liked the sound of the third finger pushed through. And here an exercise to push the first knuckle through. So the fingers learn not to push the second knuckle through, which creates a locking. Push every finger flat on D plus A string with the first knuckle pushed through. Hold the strings flat down and the arm low. It looks strange, but it's a good exercise to retrain the fingers. First knuckle is pushed through, second knuckle is bent. If you can't push the first joint through, but already the second joint locks under the pressure, crawl up with the hand until all fingers are on the A string, then come only that far up that the second joint looks bent. Don't lift the arm higher. It's not about playing, just an exercise. And keep the hand plate low and close to the neck. So the hand plate is so low, let us get a pencil. The hand plate is so low that I can put a pencil through and the pencil is under, I hope you can see it, is under the neck. So that low goes the hand 
and you can see from the side, I can see the gaps between the fingers under the neck. Now find your best possible way to make the second joint bend. And start your practice with a minute doing that. By the way, the cellist Sol Gabetta pushes off in the first joint through with most fingers and then add a link in the content. You might think, but then you touch the next string. Yes, and what? More than 99% of music is for one string at a time. In fact, feeling the next string creates the awareness where the string is, knowing exactly by how much. I was once told by a violinist an interesting story. On the violin, the strings are even closer together, so many violinists play on their fingertips to avoid touching the next string. But it can hurt playing on the bone, and the sound gets harsh. And here's the story. A blind man enters a large room, but he doesn't know the size of the room. He pulls shoulders and arms in, being very careful not to bump walls and cupboards. But the room is huge. He doesn't know. He better would have walked a circle, touched the walls, experienced how large the room is, and he could have danced around. So, if you always avoid touching the next string, we don't know where the next string is. We leave far too much space, and our finger position becomes unnecessarily steep and stiff and can hurt and doesn't sound better. We are better allowed touching and if there occurs a double stop you are used to feel the next string and you will feel when this finger clears the string. And of course you just can push the next string a bit over as well. And as I said don't wreck your hand for a situation which is very rare. Once it occurs you can get special attention and be looked at. Now, in some spots, trigger fingers happen easier. Some develop the trigger finger in position 4 to 7, particularly on D string and G string, because you can't go back, the hand is higher, and if you push, it push easier through on this joint. For sure allow to touch the upper strings. But I must say, when you play on the A string and even on the D string, have the hand played that close that you have in the hand a straight line up to the second joint and you might even touch the cello with your hand here on the knuckle. If you go out, you develop a tr trigger finger. Come as close as you can, pull the first finger back and then you are closer to the fingerboard and it will be better. But there is a problem when you go on the lower strings because you have to move the hand up. For sure, on these strings allow to touch the other strings. Don't try to come up high, but stay low and touch them because otherwise the fingers are just too high. That was mainly about the locked fingers. I might allow, if you develop a trigger finger independently, particularly in the first finger, it can have to do with the deficiency of magnesium. In the same way, it is a little cramp as it can be in the leg. To sum it up, first identify the trigger spots and avoid them by changing fingerings. Then correct the posture so the hand plate sits low and close to the cello neck, but the cello neck away from shoulder and our own neck. I hope that will help. And goodbye until next time.